Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we are entering the Wayback Machine and jumping back to the heady days of 1997. Internet stocks are hot, Ferrari's 355 is still available in showrooms, and for the first time we are seeing special series Royal Oak Offshores, the fathers of what would become a special edition dynasty. Those were the 1997 anniversary color models here represented by the red. You can see and you can purchase this extraordinary timepiece on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with the accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing. Just click through in the upper right hand and it will take you straight there. Now this watch is mentioned in the same breath as a Ferrari for good reason. It's a big red high performance machine. The timepiece was part of a 25th anniversary series at Basel World in 1997, yep, back when Audemars was still at Basel, to celebrate Gerald Genta's 1972 original, but at the same time, the special series of colors, there were originally eight of them, although not intended for production, received such a response from crowds that they did actually enter limited production. While numbers are uncertain, production of most of the colors is exceptionally uncommon. The watches are rare, they're closely held by collectors, and after the blue and the orange and yellow, the color quantities really taper off. Even by the standards of a rare family, the red is exceptionally scarce, like a Ferrari, I might add. The timepiece is classically proportioned for Royal Oak Offshore. On my 16 centimeter wrist, 42 millimeters across the round of the case, not inclusive of crown guard, chronograph pushers, or crown. In terms of thickness, a very traditional Royal Oak Offshore, 14 millimeters, so thick but not as thick as it looks. From lug to lug, this one is 54 millimeters, that's metal to metal. But I should mention that this first generation Royal Oak Offshore strapped case linkage, rather than having the two intermediate metal plots, had one big hinge. And in combination with this exceptionally supple, distressed leather, minimally bolstered, red calfskin strap, this is the easiest Royal Oak Offshore to wear on a small wrist that I have ever experienced. Now this is the reference 25770ST. You have to remember that the distinguishing feature of these early offshores on a strap was the unique combination of calfskin and hinge. We were a long ways from the hornback which came in the mid 2000s and we had not yet embraced the plots which artificially expand the watch horizontally across the wrist. For those of you who love the offshore's legacy but can't wear the contemporary models, consider this timepiece very seriously. It features one notable update, which was the inclusion of a later stainless steel single fold deployant AP logo buckle for absolute security when buckling it onto the wrist, but also for a handsome and luxurious finish and added value in the form of just a little bit more superfluous artistry. Like the watch itself, it's excessive but wonderful for it. Now the timepiece is beautifully finished. First of all, the match between the red of the dial and the red of the strap is superb beautifully executed. The two, case and strap, are joined together by screws for absolute security. That's the right way to do it, rather than spring bars with a big heavy sports watch. You can see the case band, all in satin finish, running horizontally, and the lug hoods, likewise, running horizontally across the top, giving way seamlessly to the satin finish of the top of the oversized octagonal steel bezel. But there is also contrast in the finish of the metal. This watch having just returned from Audemars Piguet factory service, you can see how perfect and crisp that hairline tapering bevel is on the flank of the case, as well as the polished and rounded edges of the bezel itself. Now you'll also note, if you can see from this vantage point that the screws themselves, stainless steel and hexagonal, remain recessed within the bezel, a sign that the bezel is very fresh. The entire watch featuring the same exceptional resolution and caliber of metallurgy, metal finish, and precision that you expect the watch must have had when it emerged from Les Brasseux in 1997. The dial is extraordinary using the older petite tapisserie pattern of the original offshores as well as the metallic blue registers themselves. You can see the blob style indices and the original rounded baton style hands and on the flank a little bit more color the blue nitrile covers about the chronograph pushers and the crown itself. 
As ever with the offshore, the bezel gasket is a visibly expressed external artistic portion of the design. And on the case back, as ever, solid steel and individually numbered. These early offshores, which featured a JLC 889 based chronograph movement, also featured a anti-magnetic inner iron cage that was lost with the thicker and subsequent AP in-house caliber. The movement inside is the AP caliber 2226-2840. It's a Jesher Lecoultre 889 operating at 4 hertz, automatic winding with a 40 hour power reserve, protected by a screw down crown down to 100 meters, it's a true sports watch, and the caliber features the additional refinements of smooth bi-directional winding, so there's no wobble as you'll find in unidirectional winders. Moreover, it features hacking, so you can pull the crown and stop the seconds to synchronize the watch to a known accurate reference time. And it also features a quick set for the date, so you can rapidly cycle it should you wish to change the date. Now, the timepiece also features a Dubois de Praz vertical clutch complication. So the vertical clutch chronograph allows you to run the chronograph continuously without any additional wear and tear of the movement in progress. This is a watch that takes you back and in the best possible way. Vibrant, boisterous, it was the founder of a long line of low volume or individually numbered special series Audemars Piguet. One of the best of that line, they often say that first is best, and if that's the case, this red edition may be the best of all. You can see and you can purchase it on our website.